Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Milwaukee Emergency Center for Animals Television is brought to you by Animal Fairy Charities, a premier organization focusing on animal welfare while teaching compassion to young children through education, experience, and leadership. For pet sake dog training, Bichon and Little Buddies Rescue, and Camp Bow Wow, premier doggy day in overnight camps. Dodger is about a nine-year-old Cocker Spaniel, he's a male, uh, that came in last night presented because he was uh, vomiting and having chronic diarrhea over the past like month, month and a half, and very, very, very excessive diarrhea and then he started vomiting. He had gone to the veterinarian the day before because of this and they ran all blood work on him and found that he had very low proteins. He had an albumin of 1.2, which normal albumin is around a 2.5 uh, to 3. So that was showing that uh, we ruled out all other causes of low protein and found that on ultrasound he had very thickened bowel loops. We've narrowed it down to loss of the protein through the uh, GI tract or the gastrointestinal system. And that's causing, that's called protein losing enteropathy or protein loss through the intestinal loops because he can't absorb it and he's losing it through the uh, diarrhea and the vomiting. So what we're going to do, we have to get an exact diagnosis just like they do in human medicine if you're having any gastrointestinal issues. They will put a scope down into the stomach and into the intestines to take biopsies and then also do a colonoscopy which a lot of people have done or do at uh, certain ages in their life or if they have issues of vomiting and diarrhea, we uh, perform a um, colonoscopy too. So endoscopy means going down into the mouth, into the stomach, and then colonoscopy up the rectum into the colon and get biopsies. Then we'll get a diagnosis and know exactly what kind of treatments we're going to need. So right now we're uh, giving propofol, which is what they use in people too, to give you a little, calm you down, give you a little sedation. It's actually general anesthesia so that they can intubate them. Because in people, normally they just put the scope down after they've given you a little bit of propofol. In dogs, we have to have full anesthesia, propofol, intubation, and then under gas anesthesia because we can't have them wake up at all because otherwise they bite down on the tube and this endoscopy instrument which is the same one this is actually made for humans is about thirty to fifty thousand dollars for this scope itself and because of that if the dog bit down on it I'd be at thirty thousand dollars Got them intubated. It goes into the hole 
breathing apparatus if you want to look down here. So here's your epiglottis and it enters right inside. That's the beginning of your trachea. Slips right in there. And then we hook them up to the gas anesthesia. And we inflate the cuffs so it stays snug with a balloon at the end. And then tie it in place. So now he's under general anesthesia. So he's got gas anesthesia going down the endotracheal tube. We have his mouth propped open because we, in case he would wake up a little bit, we wouldn't want him to bite down on the uh, long tube here. He's on the EKG monitor and he's getting IV fluids. So there's my fingers showing on the, making sure that the instrument is working. And then we're gonna pass it down the esophagus. And we're looking at the stomach wall now. So it looks a little bit red. There's a lot of fluid in there. We're in the stomach still, but we're trying to get into the intestines. There's the opening that we want to get into. Right into there. We got the opening. Right into there. We should be able to get right into the intestines. You can tell the difference in the wall. It's a little wider. There's some uh, duodenal juices in there. And this is where we're going to want to take our biopsies. So we're going to take a long instrument and place it into here. Sir, you want to hold him? Feel the tug of the tissue. Open. Yep, we got a little speck of tissue there. Very big. Ethan's going to put into the formula now. That's exciting. Big piece of sample. And we're shooting it into the formalin and collecting multiple samples. We'll take probably 10 or 20 samples from the intestines like this, 10 to 20 of the stomach, and then we'll go in and pass the tube into the rectum and up into the colon and get samples there too. We finished the procedure. It took probably about an hour, hour and a half to get multiple samples of the stomach, the duodenum, which is the beginning part of the intestines, and the colon. All of the intestinal tract looked really inflamed and was there was a lot of bleeding. So I suspect we're going to get very good samples and hopefully it'll turn out to be inflammatory bowel disease. That, that's like irritable bowel syndrome in people. And usually they're responsive to uh, steroids for a short period of time, a change in diet to a hypoallergic diet, and um, other drugs depending on how severe the condition is. So right now he's waking up, we're giving him some good breaths, he's only on oxygen, and we're just giving him a little bath because he's having a lot of diarrhea. It's a pretty smelly procedure, but it's part of our job, so. Milwaukee Emergency Center for Animals Television is brought to you by Animal Fairy Charities, a premier organization focusing on animal welfare while teaching compassion to young children. For pet's sake, dog training, Bichon and Little Buddies Rescue, 
and Camp Bow Wow, premier doggy day and overnight camps. And now, a word from our sponsors. Because you love him completely, because he is part of your family. When your pet needs emergency care, you want the very best trauma and critical care specialist standing by. You know there's only one place you can trust and always count on. I test mega and Dr. Dale Crescent for the medical care for Bailey. Dr. Crescent and I are very happy that we were able to provide medical care for Bailey and all the other Milwaukee Brewer player pets. At Metropolitan Fence, we have been keeping your children and pets safe in southeastern Wisconsin for over 27 years. We offer a full line of residential and commercial fencing from vinyl, wood, ornamental, and chain link. For a free estimate, please call us at 262-547-6001 or visit us online at metrofence.biz. And remember, we are always on the level. For over a decade, Fetch Magazine has examined the unique bond humans have with their canine companions by publishing popular dog-related topics. With a strong commitment to dogs in need, Fetch also prints local adoptables in each issue, supplies affordable advertising to businesses, and gives rescues 30% off of ads. This year, Fetch is offering $15 subscriptions for your convenience. For more information, visit www.fetchmag.com or pick up your free copy at a local pet establishment near you. Go Fetch! Sporting, grooming, training, and more. When it comes to your pet, Animal Motel is their home away from home. At Animal Motel, we offer a top-of-the-line facility with boarding suites for both dogs and cats, outdoor play yards, a training hall, and so much more. Whether they're here for obedience training, grooming, or an extended stay, we promise your dog and cat will be part of our family. Animal Motel personalized care for your precious pets. Looking to get some training for your dog? For pet's sake is your one-stop dog training center. We offer all-inclusive obedience training, canine sports training, specialty classes, and more. We provide training classes in three convenient locations with our main facility in McGuanico, which boasts a fully matted 5,200 square foot training hall. While in McGuanico, check out our Bichon Buddy Rescue and take home your new pet. Bichon and Little Buddies Rescue takes in Bichons, other small dog breeds, and cats that need to be rehomed for various reasons. Buddy is a five-year-old uh, male intact dog uh, that uh, was outside running. He was running free, got out somehow from the yard, and uh, he was hit by a car. And the reason the owner knew he was hit by car, he heard the screech of the car and then ran out there and saw the dog running back to him. When he uh, caught him, uh, he brought him right in here, he had some abrasions on the side of his legs and he had a fractured tooth. So he had been hit pretty hard, but he was also breathing. He had a very difficult time breathing. And when the doctor looked at him, she found a lot of blood in his um, chest cavity. So at first we had thought that he uh, was hit by car, only hit by car, and he had bled into his chest cavity. But that actually is very unusual, because usually blood clots in the chest cavity, even if you are hit. Uh, you'll get pulmonary contusions and you'll bleed into your uh, lung space, but usually you don't bleed into your chest cavity. And if you did, usually that blood clots pretty quickly. And this was free fluid. So it was a little suspicious. And when I came in to help the doctors evaluate the case, we saw he had several abrasions and he had the fractured tooth, but I was a little bit suspicious something else was going on. So we did, ran some coagulation uh, parameters, the PT and PTT, and showed that they were off the charts. So this dog, which is kind of not funny for him, funny in the sense of that he's doing wonderful, but he went out, ate rat poisoning, we think, um, and then uh, sometime three days prior, and then uh, yesterday ended up getting hit by a car. So it's actually, uh, we told the owner, though it's kind of a strange situation or kind of a funny situation that he got rat poisoning and then he got hit by a car, 
we feel that if he didn't get hit by a car, the owners might have never even noticed and the dog could have died at home. Because when you eat rat poisoning, the certain type that uh, affects your coagulation parameters, it causes you to bleed out everywhere. And he bled into his chest. They might have, this might have gone on unnoticed and then the dog would have passed. Thanks to God, he went out, got hit by a car, and it, not very hard because he's such a big dog, it didn't really hurt him, but it brought him, him in here, and then we were able to save his life by giving him a blood transfusion and vitamin K. He's gonna probably go home tomorrow, so he's doing really well. So Gemma is a eight-year-old boxer that just arrived and uh, emergency stat was called and the owner didn't know what happened. She said that the dog ate last night and was acting totally normally. And then this morning they found her kind of stumbling in the house and then she wouldn't get up, she collapsed and uh, they rushed her right in. As soon as we got her in here, we looked at her gums and her gums are white in color. So we were concerned that she was bleeding internally because we don't see any bleeding externally from any, uh, she doesn't have any blood in her urine, she doesn't have any blood in her stool, there's no evidence of bleeding anywhere else, she's just whiter than a ghost. We uh, took an ultrasound and looked in her belly and she has some blood in her abdomen. Uh, we also took uh, blood coagulation factors which shows that you have the ability to coagulate your blood and those are pretty elevated. So we're thinking more in the sense of that this dog got into some kind of mouse poisoning because mouse poisoning can cause you to not be able to clot your blood. The owner says there's nothing out there and there's no uh, rat poisoning available anywhere around her house, but you never know if a neighbor throws it over the yard or something happens. So right now we have an open diagnosis and we haven't figured out exactly what's going on, but I told this owner that the dog is bleeding internally and this is very serious and if we don't get a blood transfusion going on her right away, we're gonna lose her. So you can see how down and out she is right now. She's just completely out of it. So we rushed and got a blood transfusion going and we had blood in-house luckily. So we warmed that up and we're running the blood into her right now along with a plasma transfusion will follow which will give her coagulation factors and then red blood cells. So right now she's touch and go and I'm a little bit worried about her. She's uh, got a very low blood pressure because of the fact that she's bleeding internally so we're a little bit concerned here. We're going to give her the blood transfusion as fast as we possibly can and then also we're getting the uh, plasma part of the blood. So we're trying to get her warmed up as fast as we can because if she gets cold, then we're not going to be able to get a blood pressure on her. So we got two heating units on her and then we're going to heat the IV fluids also. We're going to try to get her temperature up as fast as we can to a, at least 98 degrees and then run warm fluids into her so we can warm her core temperature too that's the inside of her body circulation and then we're warming the outside with these warming blankets we have one on the bottom of her and one on the top and then we're giving her the blood transfusion and now we're going to start with the plasma transfusion which are the coagulation factors that she needs because what rat poisoning does is what we suspect is it uh, shuts down your coagulation system and you're not able to coagulate your blood so you will bleed out from everywhere in your body and that's what the problem is so by giving her coagulation factors and red blood cells we hope to get this bleeding under control
Okay, that's all right. That's okay. What are we doing? That's okay. You're a very good girl, eh? Mm -hmm. Okay, what we want to try to do is see if we see any type of evidence of why this dog would be bleeding. Because the people, I mean, one of the most likely things, of course, are coagulopathy, which is warfarin poisoning. But we have to make sure that we don't see anything like big tumors in here. So we uh, initially thought that she had maybe gotten into rat poisoning, and now we realize that she has a secondary coagulopathy, and she has a bleeding mass in her abdomen. It's the spleen that's bleeding. So we've got to go in immediately and try to get that out so we can stop the bleeding. The owners have okayed going to surgery. They want to give her a try. So, and she's obviously doing so much better uh, after getting her blood transfusion. She's looking around. She has a stable blood pressure. So we're going to get in to her and get started right away. I've got my hand on the aorta right now, on my thumb, and this structure that I'm feeling is right next to the aorta, so I'm concerned about that. That's why the dog was bleeding so obsessively, because uh, it wasn't from the spleen, it was from the organ underneath the spleen. And that particular organ or mass is sitting right on top of the aorta and bleeding and oozing. And if we try to resect it, the dog's going to bleed out. And if we didn't go in, we would have bled out too. Yes, if we didn't go in, we would have never known. So, yeah, he would have ended up bleeding to death. So we had to go in to check out to see what the reason was. So. This is one of our sadness that we have in veterinary medicine and human medicine for that sake. to show you, you're not going to believe it. This is Dr. Shimon, Dr. Michael. Hey guys. Say hi to him. Hey. Hi. I'm Dr. Marla. I'm the owner. Dr. Michael is one of the doctors here. Okay, and this is? Packer. Packer. She's a famous dog here. She is. So she runs all around the clinic and she goes up to people that are have sick animals and she sits with them and kind of consoles them. So it makes them feel a little bit better because a lot of people come in here with very sick animals, right? So you've seen them. <laughs> so we see all kinds of animals here. What do we see, Michael? Uh, we see lizards and snakes and dogs and cats and chickens and guinea pigs and rabbits. And, and pigs. pigs. We've seen pigs yeah. here. Oh, wow. Yeah, we see all kinds of creatures. And what did you guys bring? I brought blankets. Wow. Oh, good. The dogs will love it. Thank I would love so that. much. I would not I because we'll it's covered with dog pee. Ah. Oh, that's so nice. You guys. <laughs> Aren't you happy, Mike? Yeah, that we have great. so many. Yes, we need it. Special beds because yes. all the animals are so sick. <laughs> So we've got surgeries to see, guys. Wow. Yeah, a real life surgery that's going on. A lot of sick patients, okay?
Sake is your one-stop dog training center. We offer all-inclusive obedience training, canine sports training, specialty classes, and more. We provide training classes in three convenient locations with our main facility in McGuanico, which boasts a fully matted 5,200-square-foot training hall. Carpet City Flooring Center, our prices will floor you. Simply the best selection, the best service, and the best prices available anywhere. At Carpet City Flooring Center, our prices will floor you. Stop in by July 30th and get an additional 10% off. Simply the best selection, the best service, and the best prices available anywhere. At Carpet City Flooring Center, our prices will floor you. Stop in by July 30th and get an additional 10% off. Hi, I'm Jonathan Lucroy, professional baseball player. I'd like to thank Mecca and Dr. Lichtenberger for taking care of my dog Dash and uh, helping him out with some immunization stuff. I'm honored to get such good medical care and I'm proud to be part of the Mecca TV show. Today's show was brought to you by Animal Fairy Charities, a premier organization focusing on animal welfare while teaching compassion to young children. For pet's sake dog training, Bichon and Little Buddies Rescue, and Camp Bow Wow, premier doggy day and overnight camps.